People flee for their lives, screaming. Michelle? Huh? Oh, right. Ah! The Air Force is powerless against the monster. E. The monster rips the face off the clock tower and sends it hurtling through the crowd. And then Captain Awesome swoops in and rescues Miss Pretty Pretty Romantically. Michelle, we're playing Humonga Gila Monster, not Captain Awesome. You don't get to make all the rules, Jason. Yeah, but giant monsters don't go with superheroes. <laughs> oh, wait! Time to go! <laughs> Grandma, are you okay? Not to worry, dear. I'm fine. Oh, I haven't seen this in ages. I'm glad it wasn't damaged. It's rather fragile. Hey, that's a cool old dartboard. Where'd it come from? It was one of your granddad's prized possessions, dear. There's a photo album with it, too, chronicling the event. If you fetch it, I'll tell you the whole exciting story. Let's sing a little song with eight little words about a rocket ship and flightless birds. Kevin. Three, two, one. Back in his day, your granddad was a champion dartsman. Found it. Here you go. Now let's see. Oh, here we are. See? There he is. Who are the guys in the funny hats? Why, those are the Queen's own guards. They guard her palace back in England. Years ago, your granddad competed with them in a tournament around the toadstool. Cool. Oh, what a contest! And it all came down to a final dart. Granddad needed one more bullseye, and goodness, that crowd was in a stir. <laughs> Shaking. Then, just as he was about to throw that dart, what, what happened? Where? What happened next? The dartboard slipped from its nail. Yeah! But your granddad gathered himself and he threw that dart anyway. No one had ever seen anything like it. The perfect throw. <laughs> Awesome. And you saw all this, Grandmom? Of course I did, Poppet. I took the picture for the London Evening Times. Why, here's a picture of me taking a picture of him. Grandmom, you are so young. And so proud, my dear. From that day forward, they called your grandfather the King of Darts. Whoa, is this a winning dart? Can I play with it? Me Can too. Throw? Please, please Grandmom, please. Oh, uh, sorry, Poppet. Too dangerous for little nippers like yourselves. Perhaps when you're a bit older. Grandma. Now, put these things back where you found them, my darlings, and then hurry down. It's almost time for lunch. Hey, Michelle, sit that on the step there for a second. Okay. What are you gonna do? I'm gonna throw a bullseye, just like Granddad. 
But Grandmom told us not to play with it. Yeah, I know. But it wouldn't hurt to throw just one dart. I don't know. I'll relax. I'll be careful. Just one throw. Run, more, run, more, run, more, Jason! Just one throw. Come in, Mermaids! Oh, no. Hey, Beans! What was that noise? You can't tell her what happened. Say it just fell. What? I'm not gonna lie for you. Please, don't make me get in trouble. I didn't make you. You're the one. Come on, Michelle. Please. Oh, oh great. What's happened here? It fell. It just fell. I didn't throw a dart at it or anything. Right, Michelle? Uh, yeah, that's what happened. It fell by itself. Hmm. Well, if that's your word, I'll just have to believe you. You will? You will? Of course, dear. Because you two know what the good book says. Lies will get any man into trouble, but honesty is its own defense. Oh, yeah. And you know what that means, right? Um, kind of. When you tell a lie, it may have seemed like a good idea, but you end up feeling like you're carrying the weight of the world on your shoulders. But you know that, right? Right, Grandma. Yep. All right, then. Put this back upstairs, then come down before your lunch gets cold. Okie doke. I can't believe you made me do that. Sorry we had to galeasel you so abruptly. But we had no choice. There's a big time emergency on the planet to tell a lie. That's okay. Where's the captain? He's uh preparing for the mission. Geeky. Sneaky. Sassy. Ooh, classy. Mmm, twice as classy. The giant moon of planet Telelai has slipped its orbit and is now plummeting at an astounding rate. And if we don't get there soon, the entire planet will be flattened like a flounder. Prepare to bring Jason aboard. How you doing? Mitchell. Did we just get boarded by a humongous Gila monster? What are you talking about? And I'm Fidgel. Now then, where was I? In the bathroom. Ah, Jason, there's an emergency on planet Telelai. The moon has slipped its orbit. And the situation could cause a chain reaction. A flood. A fire. A flood on fire. The cable could go out. Been there. How could a giant moon just slip from its orbit? It wouldn't occur naturally. The problem is emanating from the planet. Someone did something they shouldn't have. Approaching planet Telelai. Prepare for landing. How many points do I need? Well, let's see. Fifty. One more bullseye. One more. Point of entry. That's game! Lucky shot. Hmm, where is everybody? Are we on the right planet? What gives? Yuck! All right, who threw this? It was me. Who? Yuck! Now just what? Hello, and welcome to the planet Telelai. 
Greetings, I am Captain Zigil, and this is my crew. I'd like to speak to the man in charge, the big guy, the top dog, numero uno. The king. Right, the king, uh, of course. Well, you're in luck, because I'm the king. I live in the Royal Palace Tower. I was just out for a stroll with my, uh, subjects. Yep, it's me, I'm the king. Funny, you don't look like the king. I lost weight, and I shaved my mustache. And had my nose shortened. And I'm wearing contact lenses, which is why I no longer wear glasses. Your Majesty, we must humbly inform you that your massive moon is heading straight toward your tiny planet, and we must do something before it's too late. No, it isn't. Please, remain calm. There is no need to worry. The danger is not imminent, and you've got plenty of time to figure this out. First, we'll take care of the floods and the fires, then we'll get your cable back. Basic, full package. Uh, Captain? Ah, yes. Don't know how I missed that. Guess you're doomed. Come on, crew. Back to the ship. But, Captain, we have to help them. He'll be back. I've got the keys. You're all in great danger from this giant moon above. We were just warning your king. What? What matter of treason is this? He is not the king. I am the king. He's right. What? I thought you said that you were the king. No, I didn't. Yes, you did. I did not. You most certainly did. It wasn't me. It was you. It was uh, you. I'm gonna need the keys. Captain, this other fella says he's the king. Wait a second. Did you used to be a bit rounder, have a bright orange mustache, glasses, and a larger um, nose? Um, yes. Yes, I did. Your Majesty. He's not the king. I am the king. Your Majesty. Something's making the local royalty a little edgy. Huddle. All right, what's going on here? Three kings. I've heard this story somewhere. Captain, I don't think they're really... It involves a donkey. Listen, I think everyone on this planet is lying. But why? And how are we gonna find the real king? Well, I think if we can find the royal palace... We'll find the king. But how do we get a straight answer from... I've got an idea. Which way to the palace of Telelai? North. So, east. West. 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 Uh, guys, it, it was west, right? Guys, we're going west, aren't we? <laughs> Hang on. I can't keep up. This must be the palace tower. Oh, no, that's not it. It's much bigger than that. Yes, and it's um, blue. According to these calculations, this is the only tower on the planet. Well, yes, but we have ten more towers planned. And I'm the architect. That's true. You know, these telelayers are very intelligent and perceptive darts. That one told me I was the handsomest, most brilliant leader he'd ever seen. The captain, they don't tell the truth. Exactly. See, they... Wait. Sir... I've been monitoring my device, and whereas I thought the giant moon was falling at a constant rate, I now see that it is falling very erratically. So he doesn't think I'm handsome? Well, we found the palace, but we still have a problem. We still don't know which one of these darts is the king. I have an idea. Your attention, please. I am Captain Zigil. Your planet is in great danger, and we must speak with your king immediately. Which way to the real king? Right here, right here, right this way. The real king, the king of the telegraph. Hmm, seemed to work better with that east-west thing. What was that? Look! The tower has stopped the moon. That's why I built it. Have no fear. I used only the strongest materials, and the tower will... A few corners, but I still. Oh, I invented belly buttons. We've got to figure out what's causing this. I know what's causing it. What? what? This giant moon right here. Captain, I think I've stumbled onto something. Well, you must be more careful. Well, according to the data on my device, something that these citizens are doing right now is causing their moon to drop. What, uh, what do you call that device? It's a frannibalistic perambulatory situator with D-class gyros and homing capabilities. I'm just going to call it Carl. 
<clears throat> Good people of Telali, according to Carl, you're doing something to cause this. Name something you do a lot of. Well, we arm wrestle a lot. But you don't have any arms. I didn't say we were good at it. Captain, I'm prepared to postulate a definitive correlation between the rate of their verbal utterances and their planet's approximate lunar distance. See, I'm not even sure some of those are words. You know, I think Fidgel's right. Every time they speak, the moon drops. When did he say that? Never mind, I'll handle this. Good people of Telali, I respectfully ask that you all be silent. Well, there you have it. Citizens, we have discovered the problem. You'll be happy to know that from here on out, you will be safe and sound, as long as none of you speak again for the rest of your lives, ever. Goodbye, you're welcome, and please don't worry. I know you're cheering for me in your hearts. Problem solved. I'm a genius. <laughs> I'm all tapped out. We're doomed! Think, everyone. Think! Wait! No. Sorry. Nothing. What are we gonna do? <laughs> what, what can you do when you've got the weight of the world on your tower? Stop lying! What? Don't you see? You gotta stop lying! We're not lying! See? You gotta tell the truth! Lies will get any man into trouble, but honesty is its own defense. It's wrong to lie, and when you do, it feels like the weight of the world is on you. Captain, Jason is correct. Quick, Vigil, how long can the tower hold? Uh, I, I am afraid the tower can only hold for three more lies. I knew that. <laughs> Make that two more lies. Sorry about that. Normally, I'm not one to tell a fib. Captain, please! We only have one more lie. One more! One more! One more! One more! One more! One more! Look, all I'm trying to say is that... Please, please, nobody tell a lie! I am the king. <gasps> It's true, I am. I knew I wasn't supposed to, but I couldn't resist the beautiful, shiny red button. The sign said, do not touch under any circumstances, but I did it anyway. You pressed the button that released your moon from its orbit. Yes, I did. And then I asked everyone to lie for me so that I wouldn't get in trouble with the Federation. And then we just started lying all the time. We feel awful. I know how you feel. It seems telling the truth makes the moon rise. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <clears throat> Everyone must tell the truth. Does anyone remember how to tell the truth? I'm not the king. This isn't my real hair. I sleep with a binky. Thank you, thank you. Your truth and your bravery have saved our tiny planet. Well, Your Majesty, it all came together when I... Never mind. We thank you for saving us. And to express our appreciation, we prepared your ship to launch you back to the Federation. Hey, it must feel great to come clean, huh? You bet it does. I love my daily bubble bath. Well, actually, I meant it must feel great to tell the truth, right? Beginning countdown. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two... Wait! Nope. Sorry. Nothing. <laughs> Michelle, where are you going? 
downstairs. I feel terrible, and I'm not going to lie for you anymore, Jason. I'm going to tell Grandma the truth. I'm going to tell her what really happened. Oh, no, you're not. Oh, yeah? Why not? Because I am. Grandma? Yes, dear? What is it, dear? I broke your dartboard. It didn't fall by itself. It was me. I threw a dart at it and made it fall. I see. And then, when you came upstairs, I made Michelle lie for me. He didn't make me, Grandmom. It was my choice. I could have told the truth up there. I just didn't. And I'm sorry. I'm sorry too, Grandmom. Very sorry. Well, now, do you know what I have to say to that? No, no ma'am. Ma I'm going to look you right in the eye and say, well done. What? What, what are you talking what do you about, mean? Grandma? It's not always easy to tell the truth, and maybe it took you some time. But in the end, you stood up and did the brave thing. You told the truth. Don't you feel better now? Oh, yes, yeah. much A better. A lot better. Because we told the truth. Right, Grandma? Bullseye, Jason. Bullseye. <laughs> <laughs> Dear God, please forgive me for lying. And forgive me for lying. And help us to always tell the truth. Please bless Mom and Dad and Grandmom. And please bless Rochelle, because even though I don't always act like it, she's my sister, and I love her. And that's the truth. Amen. Amen. Now put your tentacles together and give a big old Comet Lounge howdy to Pecos, Penguin, and the Polecats. Oh. Oh. We'll gather round the campfire and we'll tell you all a tale about a lonesome cowpoke who rode the dusty trail. It started out in Gamma Gulch, a peaceful little place. Until the day some outlaws came riding in from space. With a call your Beg your pardon? I said, damn, partner. Oh, happy to. <laughs> Thanks for the donation. Come on, boys. Let's spam moves. What? Ow! I told you, no marbles where I'm bamboosing. Sorry, pals. <laughs> See you next payday, suckers. <laughs> the outlaws rode into the night, laughing all the way. They promised they'd be back again to steal another day. The desperate folks of Gamma Gulch were feeling mighty down. They knew that something must be done to save their little town. Well, Dag Nabbit, if that ornery coyote ain't got us horns, welcome. Um, are you asking me to dance? This is the tenth time that Hancho Villa has made off with all our money. Mr. Mayor, we demand you do something to protect us. You're absolutely right. First thing tomorrow, I plan to issue a strongly worded letter of protest. Hm. Mr. Villa will soon feel the sting of my rapier wit. We're dead meat. <laughs> Look at that! It's an advertisement! Typical. They always land during dinner time. Coming soon to your town, the wonder showman of the solar system, Lord of the Lariat, Baron of Balloon Animals, the mightiest cowboy west of the Milky Way, Galaxy Gus! Galaxy Gus! Oh, wow. wow! Right. We need a lawman. We get some two-bit entertainer. Tale is told in times of old of one man's daring do. He's bigger than life, he's bold and brave. His middle name is Stu. Folks all cheer when he appears, his hair is never must. Blazing down the comet trails, the legend, legend of Galaxy Guns. With a kayayodly, yippee-yay-okaye. He's here! He's here! Riding down the Milky Way. Howdy, kids. Galaxy Guns at your service. The fastest draw, the twirliest rope, the steeliest eye in the old west sector. And not a bad little rumba dancer. Wow, Mr.
Mr. Gus. You must be the best cowboy in the whole universe. Well, now, little orange buckaroo, I wouldn't say that. Wait, yes, I would. Gee, I bet you could save our town from outlaws. Huh? Oh, uh, sure, sure, if you had any. In fact, saving is what I do best. Why, just last week, I, um, lassoed a meteor and saved a town twice this size from a fiery doom. Wow. Tell you all about it tonight at my big show right here. And remember, youngins, always stand tall in the saddle. Helps avoid chafing. Here you go, little fella. The dreaded phlegm monster of Alpha Bi. For me? Of course. That'll be 50 cents. And kids, don't forget to ask your folks for a Galaxy Gus lunchbox. All credit cards accepted. They're coming back. Honcho Villa and his boys are coming back. What? But they just cleaned out the bank. I know, but they forgot to take the pens on chains. They say they'll be back in five or six minutes, depending on traffic. Galaxy Gus will face them down. Yeah, I'll face them. Huh? Saving is what he does best. He said so. Did you really say that, mister? Uh, well, uh, <clears throat> yeah, sort of. Uh, oh, that's most uh, commendable of you. Well, gotta go high. Good luck. Oh, Galaxy Gus stood tall and proud. His work had now begun. He quickly knew the thing to do, and the thing to do was... Run! With a kai-yo-yo-li-pi-yo-kai-yo. Galaxy Gus was chicken through and through. Oh. Yeah. Hey, Mr. Gus! You're going the wrong direction! The bad guys are coming from that away! Uh, right, little buckaroo, but uh, you see, I uh, remembered I gotta go pose for a new constellation. Where are you going, Galaxy Gus? Save us! Save us! Save our town! Save us! Look, kid, you don't understand. I can't face those outlaws. But you're the greatest hero that ever rode the Star Train! Well, uh, true, but it's just. Aw, oh, heck, kids. I'm no hero. I'm not even brave. What do you mean? I'm a fake, a phony, a bona fide two bit liar. I made up all those stories just to sound important. I can't fight outlaws. I throw up before gym class. Well, you told the truth. That was brave. <sighs> yeah, sure. Maybe I can pummel them with lunch boxes. Oh. Then Hancho Villa and his gang rode in with hollers and hoops. And there stood Galaxy Gus alone, a shaking in his boots. With a kai yi yo li yip yi yo kai lunch. Galaxy Gus was about to lose his lunch. <laughs> take mine, boys. I can take this puffed up pinno bean by myself. It's just you and me now, cowboy. Hey! Get this thing off of me! Hey! Hey! Uh, let go, you crazy calamari! Oh, Galaxy Gus, he vowed that day that he would lie no more. Now he's a bigger hero than he ever was before. 